Greetings all, the practitioner here. Um, GeniusBoy1380, one of my longtime viewers, uh, sent me the following message, and uh, I thought I would address it. Um, video on atheist morality? Hey, I'm a longtime viewer of your channel, and I appreciate your rational slash analytical approach to, uh, um, you take to the topics discussed in your videos. I would like to see you make a video discussing morality from the atheist worldview, and see if you can logically and rationally defend moral relativism, since atheism has no objective moral standard. Um, you criticize fundies for being inconsistent, but I would like to see how uh, your opinion of uh, morality is consistent with your worldview. Thanks, I am a Christian myself, but eager to hear your arguments. Thanks, Peter. Um, P.S. To be clear, uh, see, um, see these vi brief videos uh, to familiarize yourself with the arguments. Uh, well, Peter, um, or Genius Boy 1380, um, uh, this is a shout out to you, and I'm finally getting around to doing this video. So I would like to try in roughly 10 minutes or so, or 15, to express my worldview on morality in general. Firstly, even though I am an atheist, I am not a moral relativist. I want to make this perfectly clear, and I'll explain why in about a minute. I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. I do believe that, unfortunately, the hu way humanity is currently living is in a form of moral relativism, and allow me to explain this. Um, uh, but under the guise, okay, basically, for example, um, as I pointed out, fundies are inconsistent. Uh, for example, uh, or, or even even religions, to exert an example, are inconsistent. Even the Christian Church, as a as a general model, is inconsistent. For example, allow me to demonstrate. In the Catholic Church, they consider it immoral for women to become priests. Yet, the um, Anglican Church claim that it is moral for women to become priests. Both are Christian denominations. Both claim that their morality is from the, is from the Word of God. Both interpret the Bible for support, uh, for support of their system. Yet, they completely disagree with each other. They completely disagree with each other, and both think that they are objectively morally right. So, you see, this is my point. The, uh, this is my point. We are, and the thing is that this is only a small example, but we tend to do this with a lot that we all live with our own personal moral codes. The fact that we have moral disagreements with people is an example that we live in moral relativism because of the fact that people are still holding their own moral views and not objectively testing them. That's my point. If there is an objective source, we need a proper objective tool to measure it, and the way the Bible is written, and because of the fact that it is interpreted, you know, it's so written so uh, the fact that it, you know, uh, well, number one, I'm an atheist, so I don't believe it comes from a, from a you know, from a, from a, uh, from an outside, uh, you know, uh, divine source or what have you, A, and B, the fact that it is written so vaguely, and the same goes with most religious scriptures, the fact that they are written so vaguely that they can be interpreted in any which way that they so choose, or people find ways to interpret them in any which way they so choose, and claim that it's an objectively moral, I believe we are living under moral relativism. Now, that being said, I do not think that is the way we should be living, and uh, this is the way, um, and now my own personal moral view, is that we should be living in an objective moral view, but we should be determining, we should be finding an objective moral tool, um, and I believe that we actually should be, as human beings, making, uh, I believe that we actually should be arguing on and determining, uh, I believe that one of our first priorities as humans should be arguing and objectively determining scientifically what is the appropriate moral standard by which we measure uh, arguments against? We actually measure them. Now, the personal argument that I would like to argue, and this is how my this is how I live my worldview. And now I do, um, I would I would argue that this is objectively moral. But if somebody has other evidence to contradict me, I will be willing to hear said evidence in order to be able to uh, and then reassess the moral objective accordingly. But I must I must see evidence that this idea is a wrong is the wrong tool to use. Um, I argue, uh, uh, I argue that moral, that moral objective, that objective morality should be measured based on the system of the collective survival of life and of the human species. And a lot, and, uh, uh the, you know, and that every, uh, um, and this should be both in the short term and in the long term, in terms of our personal actions and in terms of collective actions of large groups of us. Now, allow me to explain my, uh, four point argument behind why we do this. Uh, why we should be doing this. One, to our knowledge, the Earth is the only planet which, which supports life. Thus meaning that until such time as we have objective moral evidence, uh, until such time as we have objective scientific evidence that there is life on other planets um, elsewhere in the universe, uh, out of the 1,200 or so planets that have been discovered by the Kepler project, until such time as we have, have objective evidence that there is life there, or that there is a highly likely, or, or that it's, you know, 
and not, I'm not just talking high probability, I'm talking like objective evidence that there is life on other planets, we must assume that this is the, we must assume skeptically and cautiously that this is the only planet which supports life, and therefore that life is a rare, uh, is a rare and precious commodity. Of, um, reason number two. The fact, uh, the fact is, is that there are patterns that, uh, life seems to generate, uh, and particularly humans seem to generate, uh, uh, that life seems to generate, which are not necessarily generated in nature alone. Um, I provide examples of music. I provide examples of art. I provide the examples of tool use. Um, you know, these are, these are, uh, these are things that animals do, that life does, uh, or, or that life seems to do, that do not actually get done, uh, or, you know, seem to develop these patterns that, uh, that do, that are not necessarily made in nature. Um, uh, exa um, uh, example. We also, add, um, um, number three. Okay, which, and this also leads into point number three. Point number three. Humans seem to be the only animals which, uh, um, which seem to be able to, uh, generate the greatest complexity of this. I.e., we develop technology, art, literature, culture. Um, you know, we seem to be the most complex, li we seem to be the life forms which generate this complexity. Um, and points two and three fall, fall under the umbrella of, since the universe is trying to develop entropy as part of its natural development, i.e., the greatest number of complex, uh, greatest complexity of and number of patterns, life seems to provide a certain subset of types of patterns that would otherwise not be provided. Therefore, we fulfill a function in the universe's natural laws. Now, uh, you know, and therefore we should, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, th we, for we form this function, and therefore we should be continuing to perform this function. Point number four, uh, actually, I think that may have been point number four. Hang on, I'm just trying to remember. There's some, there was one other key aspect. Oh, yes, I remember now. Um, assuming that there is no God and natural selection goes, it behooves us, uh, because we are the only creatures that seem to be able to understand the universe on a scale beyond our planet. I.e., we put up telescopes. We we understand that there are other planets out there. We seem to be the only species on our planet which has that capability. Therefore, we sh therefore, as an empirical and scientific viewpoint, if we you know if we're working on a purely objective viewpoint, we should be actually uh, trying to uh, um, since we are the only creatures that we should be from a moral under uh, from from a purely objective scientific standpoint to uh, you know uh, uh, in our, you know in the interest of scientific objectivity. We should be trying to keep life and therefore ourselves alive long enough to, uh, or, or for the species long enough for the species to be able to add to its knowledge database whether or not there is life on other planets. So from a purely objective standpoint, that point alone is part of the reason why I, me I figure measure based on that uh, point. So allow me to now provide an example from one of the videos that was posted below. Um, the uh, the video in question uh, the video in question um, well one of the two videos that was co uh, posted below and was sent to me by Genius Boy 1380 um, was uh, the point that they offered the, that they offered was the idea that uh, you know was asking a moral relativist if torturing children was uh, you know was okay within his worldview because it was uh, because he was moral. Let's now apply the uh, the the idea of the collective survival of life and of the human species to um, this sample. Okay, let, let's 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 now provide the uh, let's now provide the um, let, let's now take this tool and apply that uh, that uh, that uh, object of whether or not ch uh, um, child molestation is more or, or child molestation or child uh, torture is right or wrong. Okay, number one, child torture could possibly lead physical damage. Physical damage meaning that child is unable to reproduce. Biodiversity is necessary. For, each, uh, for the humans, for any species to survive, uh, because of natural, uh, you know, because of natural selection, uh, you know, evolution by natural selection. Therefore, torturing a child physically is wrong because of the high pop of the high probability that you might actually end up possibly making that child unable to reproduce, thus possibly hurting biodiversity because that child's genes may need to pass on to some future generation so that humanity may in fact adapt and be able to survive some, uh, something upcoming, such as droughts coming from climate change. We don't necessarily know that's the case, but we do know that we that uh, we do know that the that uh, biodiversity means that it's a higher likelihood that whatever comes along, you know, uh, in in climate in in in, uh, in you know in, in environmental changes, that that uh, that uh, that that having a greater the biodiversity of you know having a greater um, having greater permutations or combinations of genes does mean an increased likelihood that the species will survive. So. 
On that point one already, child uh, molestation is immoral. Point number two. Uh, point number two. Uh, child, uh, child, uh, children, like all humans, are sentient beings. Because of that fact, and because of the fact that uh, uh, the humanity provides that infinite complexity, um, the uh, possibly harming a child, uh, you know, child molestation, could psychologically uh, harm the child to the point where the child will be unable to fulfill uh, to be able to fulfill prim premise three, namely to be able to contribute to the complexity of the universe, uh, i.e., generate patterns as well as the fact they would not be able to help preserve biodiversity by helping, uh, you know, fulfill a job or what have you, uh, to do something which actually helps provide, uh, you know, helps the human uh, species or the human society survive in a small way. Therefore, based on two counts, child, uh, uh, child molestation and child torture are both wrong, as, a, as is killing children or as is killing any life form which is not already reproduced. So, for example, um, so for example, uh, uh, to uh, allow me to, uh, uh, for example, allow me to make this point: um, to kill somebody, uh, you know, to kill somebody may be morally wrong under certain circumstances. If that person has not reproduced, uh, if that person has not reproduced, or their DNA is not preserved, then it would it would most certainly be morally wrong to uh, to kill said person. Um, you know, it would, it would certainly be morally wrong to kill said person because of the fact they have not reproduced and therefore you might be destroying, you might be harming biodiversity. Um, on the other hand, if that person is leaving children behind, provided the resources that person had go to the children, thus meaning that the children possibly survive and thus preser preserving biodiversity and, you know, preser and, you know, meaning that they provide function, then it might, then it might be morally right to kill said person. Uh, or you know, then then you know, then then uh, then removing uh, moral, you know, then uh, then removing a moral, you know, a threat to the system might be okay. But there is a problem, however. Now this is where, and now this is where my argument towards the death penalty comes in. Here's where I want to make this perfectly clear. If the person has already reproduced, then the biodiversity harm uh, of killing them is no longer is no longer an issue. However, another moral issue does show up. If the person is innocent, if the person is in fact innocent, and there have been cases of people who have gone to death row who were actually later exonerated off death row because of the fact that DNA evidence later found them to be not guilty. Um, you know, so, and there have been cases recently found in Texas of people who actually, when they read it in DNA evidence afterwards, uh, found that the evidence which had actually sent them to death row and had them executed was suspect, thus meaning they probably were most likely innocent. The problem is, though, is that unfortunately, um, in this case, people were removed who were otherwise um, uh, people were removed who were otherwise actually uh, uh, good, uh, you know, um, produ uh, producing society. Thus, meaning that we actually prevented a human from allowing um, from allowing uh, from completing their work uh, doing premise three. Um, so, for example, you know, so therefore that action is immoral, and that's part of the reason why I would also say killing is immoral. Because, of, um, and I would also extend that to say killing is immoral in another form, because of the fact that we don't necessarily know whether or not, um, uh, whether or not, uh, uh, you know, their combination of their genes and someone else's genes may in fact also help uh, preserve the human race at some point. So, based on that, I would say killing is wrong because of the fact that it harms biodiversity, um, you know, uh, maybe less so under certain circumstances than others, but it still harms biodiversity. Um, you know, be, uh, so, uh, you know, until such time as we have objective data, um, you know, until such time as we have objective data that is morally right to kill that person, i.e. that they are a clear and present threat to biodiversity, um, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, a uh, clear and present threat, i.e. that, you know, we have, we may have to kill them in order to help save someone else's life, you know, and then, uh, and even then it's still not morally right, it's just the lesser of two evils, you know, i.e. it's just, you know, what, you know, one evil to preserve, you know, to, uh, you know, to, make, you know, to prevent a greater evil, namely the killing of more people. But, you get the idea. So my hope is that, um, so basically, I'm, in summation, I believe that we should be living by an objective moral code. I propose a moral tool by which we do so, but that, like I said, we should, that, uh, that, but that, um, that uh, in order to truly live by an objective moral code, we have to have a scientific tool, we have to have a scientific tool by which to measure against not, uh, you know, and, 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 and every, uh, situation must be judged, uh, how, by all the variables in the situation to, uh, measure against, uh, uh you know, object, uh, all the variables must be measured objectively before a moral decision can be made. Hope that clears things up for people.